Hi, my name is Linda Pansing. I'm a curator of archaeology for the Ohio History Connection. And I want to talk to you about some questions that we've been getting from people about what do we do here as an archaeologist with the Ohio History Connection. And one of the first questions that came up is, ah, what made me decide to become an archaeologist? Um, honestly, it was when I was in elementary school and the King Tut exhibit was coming through the United States. I believe it was back in the 70s, 1970s that is. And um, it really excited me seeing everything um, that they found that was several thousand years old and going, oh, well, they had toys too and, and the people there had dogs and cats and, and boats. I saw a lot of things that made me connect with um, the people in the past. So I think that was one of the first things that started me being interested in archeology. span Next question, what do you do with the stuff you find? Well, the things that we find are from uh, the sites that we have throughout our site system. And we have about 58 places throughout the state that we're responsible for. Uh, places like Fort Meigs or Ulysses Grant's Boyhood Home or Fort Ancient down in Warren County. And when we find things that are part of an archaeology project or a construction project, we record where they're from and we carefully remove them and take them back to the laboratory, wash them, weigh them, measure them, uh, label them, and bag them and have that information uploaded onto a system so anybody can find out what kind of material we found at different places at different times. And each artifact is kind of like a word in a chapter in a book. And once that's taken from its original context, that whole chapter, you might not be able to understand it after a while if more words are taken and more words are taken. So whatever we recover, we do record where it comes from and we have that information. So it's never really going to be lost. Okay, the next question I have is, how do you decide what goes in a museum? Well, it's not just me that decides it. It's everybody uh, on a museum team that is working on a specific exhibit and that exhibit tells a story. So if we have an artifact that uh, works within the story that they're telling, uh, we will choose the artifact that is the best example of that item to help tell that story. So it's kind of like a committee decision, but it also relies on the curator to know what material is in the collection so they know what's the best thing to choose. Next up is, what do you like the most about archeology? span What I like the most is I'm never bored. I always am doing something different. So uh, for instance, I could be doing data entry one day, or I could be working out in a field with a construction crew next to a big heavy equipment uh, bulldozer and walking alongside and making sure that they're not harming anything that they're um, working around. I could be writing a report. I could be talking to people like you. Uh, it varies quite a lot. So sometimes it's office work, sometimes it's outside work. You just have to be very flexible and know that um, what you're planning on doing that day could change at any moment. And the next question. Have you ever found a dinosaur fossil? No. Uh, there are no dinosaurs in Ohio. Unfortunately, the type of stone that a dinosaur would be found in uh, was either eroded away or pushed away from the glacier with the glaciation that happened here. So unfortunately, no, Ohio does not have dinosaurs, but we have some really great fossils. And the coolest thing I've ever found. 
Um, it really depends. Um, the, the coolest thing, I think, is I was on a project at one of our sites at Fort Ancient in 2006, I believe. And we had hired a um, contractor to do remote sensing of the ground to see what was below the ground, kind of like an x-ray or an MRI. So um, you know what's there before you can potentially impact it. And uh, during that process, we uncovered a very large um, Hopewell, about 2,000 year old structure that is the most unique construction um, of any Hopewell type in Ohio. So that was really exciting. What do you do when you're not digging for artifacts? Um, I do a lot of different kinds of things. Uh, in our office, we're um, all responsible for every aspect of our job. So, um, for instance, last week, I was outside working at uh, the Harriet Beecher Stowe House in Cincinnati, um, watching the construction crew dig. Um, and then I was back in the office writing up a report on a shipwreck and doing a data entry of a collection catalog and um, packaging artifacts. So, um, yeah, it varies quite a bit. I also work with outside archaeology firms who want to curate their objects at our curation facility. So I have a lot of outside contacts uh, with them, with federal entities who do the same conservation, and also uh, with um, researchers who want to come in and work with our collections. What do I like least about archaeology? It's kind of what I like best about archaeology. It's unpredictable, which means I may have something planned that day that I really want to work on, but I can't work on it because all of a sudden some other project comes up that takes priority. So I need to be able to, again, be flexible and stop one project, start another. And um, yeah, that's kind of the best and worst thing about archaeology. <laughs> How old does something have to be to be an artifact? Okay. So by law, 50 years. So uh, Dairy Queen spoons that are 50 years old would count as an artifact. Anything that's 50 years old or older is an artifact, historic or pre-contact. What's the oldest thing I found? Um, it would be a uh, projectile point that's about this big um, that's about 10,000 years old, and that would be the oldest thing. So the next question is, what, ah, oh, that's good. Okay, um, what would be the one thing that people would be surprised that are, that's found in Ohio? And I would say shipwrecks. Uh, when you think of Ohio, not many people think that we have a lot of shipwrecks, uh, but we really do. And uh, people have been using the water, whether it be Lake Erie, Ohio River, Muskingum. We have uh, used shipwreck or ships to transport people, transport goods for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And they were kind of like the super highway of the time. So. Um, Lake Erie is very shallow. It kicks up very easily with um, weather and wind. So it makes it one of the more volatile um, lakes in the United States when it comes for uh, shipping. And uh, there are estimates somewhere around 1,500 wrecks just in Lake Erie. So uh, we have firm uh, locations for over 100 of them 
and I know that there's another probably 50 that people have um, information on. So uh, I think people would find that uh, most interesting is that, yeah, we have shipwrecks and people are uh, looking for shipwrecks and people are recording shipwrecks and um, having uh, a lot of uh, interest in our maritime history. So that was the last question that we had uh, to answer. And I, I hope you enjoyed this little segment. And if you do have any additional questions, just email me at lpanzing at ohiohistory.org. And you can also go to our website for more information on activities that you can do to learn at home. And that's ohiohistory.org slash learn at home. Thank you.